Well, welcome back, everybody. I hope your your new year was good. I hope your break was awesome. Um, I'm kind of still in self quarantine mode, so I'm going to try to get through this as best I can. And uh, hopefully, I'll be back to you as soon as I feel able to. So um, it's been a rough break a little bit. Hopefully, you had a better break than me. Um, but I guess it's good to be back. I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> so. Uh, anyways, a couple things today. What you're going to do is you're going to do the following three things. You're going to first watch this short video. It should be about five minutes or so, hopefully, if I time it out right. Then you are going to read this article. You may find this article, which is called The Periodic Table Turns 150, and has everything that you need from today's lecture, everything that you need from that. In fact, this is the most important part that you read this article. And then after you've read the article, you may want to take notes. Uh, you're going to answer these questions um, in there's a test. Um, in Schoology over today's stuff. So the video, then the article, then take the test. Okay, I'm gonna make the test achievement credit. So you definitely want to like do it in those order, in that order. Okay, so just a, a brief little review. Um, so a couple things. First of all, the groups on the periodic table. The groups are these vertical columns. You can see that there are 18 total groups, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 18. Um, the vertical columns groups, groups share properties. So like we have the alkali metals, the alkaline earth, the halogens, we've done this from a long time. And then um, on the periodic table, there's also periods. The periods are the rows. So there are seven periods on the periodic table. And then we can further classify elements by their properties. So for example, there are metals. Metals on the periodic table, these are things to the left of this metalloid line. And then, excuse me, and then non-metals are on the right. And of course, hydrogen is a non-metal. The only reason why hydrogen is over there is because it tends to have one valence electron. So otherwise it would should be, and some people still debate this, should be somewhere over here. Okay, and then of course metalloids are on the metalloid line. So that's just a brief thing of where you should be at on the periodic table right now. Okay, now let me get rid of that. So um, back up a little bit. Um, as people were starting to organize the elements in around 1800, um, that's when atomic theory kind of started with John Dalton, but uh, Johann Dobringer was the first to kind of put forward the first periodic table. And there weren't very many elements, maybe about 20 at the time. And he's like, wait, there's some repeating patterns. And he called this the law of triads or tripl triplets. And he said that if you take three elements on the table, one, two, three, and if you add 39 plus seven, you get 46. You divide that by two you'll get the middle number each time and you'll find that kind of works for most of the elements and he's like there's something there and so he gives us our first periodic table by putting forth the law of triads now it doesn't work all the time but it's the it's a start so johann dobringer the german was our gives us our law of triads or triplets and for the first time we start organizing all these elements and starting to make predictions using them okay so let's go to the next one so another guy, um, his name is John Newlands, he's British, and he puts forth something called the law of octaves. All right, so I'll put that down here, might, might as well. So octaves, um, if you're into music, you know octaves eight, right? So every eighth element repeats itself on the table, and this actually works pretty well. And so you can see that his periodic table kind of starts looking similar to some of the ones that we have. And although it's not quite, you know, the same, it's start. And so this is around 1860, and this gives us, you know, the first kind of closer periodic table. And you guys remember the octet rule, and I think he was onto something there. So yeah, super cool. So then uh, this is the main guy, and this is what the article is really about: is Dmitri Mendeleev. Now Mendeleev is a big deal because of a couple of reasons. Number one, Mendeleev is the first to really see the periodic table um, in a modern sense, and he organized it according to atomic mass. So the masses of the elements go up, but also he said, well, you know what? I think there's elements that are missing from this. And so he left blanks for undiscovered elements. And within his lifetime, they actually discovered them. These spaces were elements such as germanium, gallium, technetium, and all of them were found and they were all exactly like he said they would be, which is pretty cool. So he saw that there was a pattern and he kind of was the first to put the pattern down on paper. And so he's given credit with uh, for giving the um, first um, periodic table. And this is actually what it looks like. It doesn't look much like it, uh, except you'll find that that his groups were switched around. 
So you almost have to like flip it over this way to uh, get it to get the first really true periodic table. But but if you look at it, it definitely has the organization that we have today. And so this is kind of where it all started. Plus, let's be honest, Dmitry Mendeleev here is he's quite the looker, right? So I mean, he looks awesome. So you know, there's that too. All right. Now uh, the periodic table was basically put you know, to finish when Henry Mosley comes up with this idea that, oh, hey, it's, if you organize by not atomic mass, but atomic number, you get the current kind of situation. So he's the one that discovered protons, and that's how they placed them in the current, you know, so around 1920 is when it really starts looking like what we would think the periodic table looks like. Okay, so this brings us to the periodic table law, which basically says that if you put them in increasing atomic number with groups, They'll share chemical properties. And in fact, what you'll get is you'll get something called periodicity, which is going to be what we talk about, whether virtually, <laughs> whether in person. We This is how we'll end our last nine days. So periodicity just means that there's a repeating pattern. And today and over the next two weeks, we're going to look at the patterns on the periodic table and explore those. So again, so you can push pause on this video. What you're then going to do is you're going to go read this article again found in unit six in schoology and then you're going to take this quiz and look i just gave you an answer the, you know, the first one's false so make sure you remember that and then um that should take you through uh the day so hang in there feel free to email me if you have questions if you're at home quarantine too super easy day just try to stay on it if there's stuff that you need to make up such as exams or whatever we'll try to get that gone too but biggest and most important thing is that we get through the day and that we're safe and everything else. So hang in there. It's good to see you virtually. Feel free to send me uh, a note. I'd love to hear from you. And otherwise, we'll talk to you later.